Douglas Cooling and Heating. Serving the Birmingham area for 38 years. 988-3706. That's Douglas. I'm James Spann. This is the Weather Extreme video for Tuesday, the 1st of February. Boy, what a powerhouse storm coming out of the southwest. Uh, could that bring severe weather to Alabama later today? Uh, winter weather mischief maybe late this week or early next week. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get right to it and begin with the uh, sky cam shots, as we always do. First off, coming from Cullman, cloudy, a little foggy up in uh, north Alabama, down below that U.S. Highway 278. Chiha, they're 44. It looks like we've got some uh, wedging. Uh, colder air coming in from the east over east Alabama. Uh, and, of course, they're in the clouds up there. And down in Demopolis, that's historic Bluff Hall on the banks of the Tom Bigby River is seen from the Demopolis Civic Center. All right, there you go. What can you say? You've got the uh, uh, phasing in progress, big storm developing over Texas, everything unfolding uh, as planned. There's a surface chart. The leading edge of that really cold air is down to about Little Rock and Dallas-Fort Worth. That's a 1,052 millibar high is analyzed by this thing up in Montana. That is the core of this uh, brutally cold air. Wow. We'll peek at our numbers this morning. The uh, temperatures are generally in the 50s. But again, notice the 40s off to the east. Uh, 46 in Gadsden, 49 for Anniston. Uh, seems to be some cold air damming with colder air slipping down the... Uh, uh, slopes of the Appalachians from the northeast, but everybody else in the uh, mid-50s. And basically, those numbers have not changed since late yesterday. We've been sitting at 54, 55 all night long. But goodness gracious, back in the uh, cold air, it's 40 below zero in the core of that air mass over uh, Manitoba in Canada. And that's nosing over into uh, Montana. Wow. Uh, Sub-zero readings down into Kansas and Colorado. And, of course, you can see the tongue of warmer air coming up through the southeastern states down through here where uh, readings in the Gulf Coast are down there in the 60s. And there's our uh, surface look at the uh, big storm coming off the SPC mesoanalysis page, uh, 1,004 millibar low that's near Lufkin, Texas. And, uh, again, that is a messy, messy setup up there for Tulsa and uh, Oklahoma City and uh, points north as that low roars northeast during the course of the day today. And uh, mercy, that makes you want to slap your mama, doesn't it? Talk about a wide uh, impact of a storm. Uh, blizzard warnings for Oklahoma City and Tulsa, St. Louis, Chicago, Detroit. Uh, winter storm warnings all the way from uh, really the, the Texas Hill Country up to New England. And, of course, all the counties in Alabama, that's a wind advisory. We'll see very strong pressure gradient winds today gusting to uh, 30 miles per hour at times. And again, there's the big RPM snow accumulation look. Just a good look at a glance of where the heaviest snow will be. And again, uh, Tulsa to St. Louis. And let me tell you what, that yellow you see near St. Louis, that's 24 to 30 inches. Um, over two feet. Chicago, Detroit, and the interior parts of New England. Uh, really, New York City and Boston will miss out on the big uh, fun of this one. And they are thankful for that. And understand, to the south of the snow zone, there could be a strip of very nasty icing where there could be some power outages and, and a quarter inch of ice. And I'm telling you, that is a very challenging call. Um, I, I do the weather in Cincinnati, and that is a tough call for them. The southern suburbs might wind up with mostly a cold rain. The northern suburbs with a nasty ice storm. Uh, so it's a pretty tough call on the southern edge of that. But, of course, for us, we know that... Uh, uh, with this thing, it's going to be all windy and wet and stormy. Speaking of stormy, all of a sudden, the SPC guys that pulled that risk went to a pretty deep part of Alabama, almost all the way over to U.S. 431. So uh, all of Louisiana, Mississippi, the western two-thirds of Alabama, southeastern Texas and southeast Arkansas with a slight risk of severe weather. And we all know here in January, the limiting factor, I say January, this is February now, the limiting factor is going to be instability. And we'll take a closer look at that. And there's the overall precipitation for the next five days. Valid through uh, Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. Of course, the bigger numbers up in the blizzard. And of course, we got some big rain numbers down here with 2.1 inches near Fort Walton Beach. We'll look at the GFS. This is valid at 12 noon today. Here's your trough at 500 millibars. Noon today, the surface low is really over the Mississippi Delta. This run is coming in farther south. Uh, it's got the thing uh, just north of Greenville, between Greenville, Mississippi, and Memphis, Tennessee. 
6 o'clock this evening, surface low, 1,000 millibars near Paducah, Kentucky. And uh, that's when we could see some uh, heavy rain here, maybe some thunder. I don't know if we see here a lot of thunder and see a lot of lightning with this because of the lack of instability, but uh, certainly there will be some convective bubbles within that. And then uh, tonight at midnight, the whole thing is out of here. It's on the way out. And again, we think the timing will be, say, 3 p.m. until midnight. We'll just kind of leave that nine-hour block as the main window for rain and thunder. And, of course, by tomorrow, it's all over and it turns colder. There's that 1,044 millibar high drop south into the Texas panhandle. Uh, we'll check the uh, some severe weather parameters. This is the uh, uh, most unstable cape, not the surface-based and there's a little bit, but not much. Now, there's no surface base cape and just a little uh, MU cape coming up through West Alabama and East Mississippi. This is 6 o'clock this evening, and that's the limiting factor, the buoyancy. You know, uh, if we had high instability, then look out. This could be really nasty. But, of course, we all know the shear values are off the chart. This is the 0 to 1 kilometer helicity. So, you know, there might be a little tornado warning in there somewhere tonight. But I think the main issue would be from straight line winds. Um, and we'll see if a little low-topped uh, convective line can form that uh, will bring, bring some of those strong winds down to the surface. Sp speaking of strong winds, let me show you the jet, uh, jet stream look. This is at 200 millibars this evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, the core of that thing uh, just off to the west is uh, over 170 knots, 200 miles an hour. Goodness. Now, look at the low-level jet. This is 850 millibars, about 5,000 feet off the ground. Those winds are howling up there. That's over uh, uh, almost 70 knots over Alabama. So it's not going to take a lot to transport that down to the surface. So any little convective band that comes can produce some strong winds. So, again, uh, 3 to midnight, uh, very windy, pressure gradient winds, a lot of rain, one inch of rain likely, and uh, uh, maybe some thunder, and the main risk would be strong straight-line winds. And just maybe, just maybe an isolated spin-up tornado somewhere. So we'll have to be on our toes and work that radar very carefully this evening. All right, let's go to Thursday. Again, Wednesday, tomorrow, just going to be uh, uh, colder. Not so sure it clears a lot. Might see the sun peak out, and we'll struggle to reach the low 40s with a very chilly north wind. Uh, but there's Thursday, and you can see we got another trough to the west, and the flow is still out of the southwest. And down below that, rain over the Gulf Coast in far south Alabama. Thursday will be a cloudy day and a chilly day with a high in the in the low 40s. The uh, uh, the NAM is showing 42, and I think that model has been right on. They, they've been doing great with the temperatures this winter, that model. And so I think uh, low 40s would be likely considering the fact the air is coming across the vast snowpack. All right, and Friday, here comes the next wave. And, and uh, let me tell you what now. now. I know that, you know, at first glance, you think, well, it's all rain. And, but if it starts early enough, Friday morning, there could be a touch of freezing rain involved in there. Um, and Friday night on the way out, there could be a, a smidgen of snow on the backside. There's Friday night at uh, midnight. whole thing is on the way out. But, again, there could be a changeover on the backside. We've got to get this thing out of here tonight before we focus on that. Um. Look at the uh, European, very similar to the uh, GFS. At first glance, it looks uh, too warm for snow. But again, the concern would be very shallow cold air that those thickness values will not reflect the cold air coming off an incredible snowpack north of here that the models won't understand. And if it starts early enough in the day Friday, like in the pre-dawn hours Friday morning, there could be some freezing rain here and some icing problems. That's a very real possibility. But again, we're not going to jump all over that right now due to the... Uh, uh, the fact that we got to get this thing out of here tonight. We don't like to, you know, hit something really hard multiple days in advance. But I'm just saying, Friday morning could be icy. Could be. Uh, but it looks like just a cold rain throughout the day. And um, and then on Saturday, the, the thing is out. And Saturday would be a, a chilly and dry day. Highs in the 40s. Maybe some clearing, slow clearing. And then uh, Sunday would be, uh, again, dry. Uh, maybe low 50s on Sunday. But let me just show you the buff kit output. Now, this is a whole bunch of different models, and this is the accumulated snow forecast. All right. The, and look, you got one run here of the GFS suggesting uh, what? Uh, one inch of snow early, late Thursday night, early Friday morning here. Now, that's an outlier. I'm more concerned about freezing rain than snow, but I'm just saying. And then you got a couple of other runs that want to bring in uh, maybe a dusting, about a half inch, on the way out Friday night. 
So you can see why we're concerned about some winter weather mischief. And look down there on the right, all right? We've got this next deal early next week, and you've got a couple of model runs that are trying to bring in one inch of snow Monday night of next week. So let's look at that. Let's go to Monday. There's your next trough. A week from, or a week from yesterday, down at the surface, the surface low is pretty far north with a trailing front, a very cold high, 1,044 millibars. We'll go to uh, Monday night at uh, midnight, and there's your snow deal. Nothing heavy, but again, as you saw with that buff kit output, some of the models trying to put down an inch of snow with this thing, and then a week from today, man, is it cold. Ouch. Uh, we would not be above freezing if this is right. That strong wind would just cut you in half. Uh, goodness. And then the following day, Wednesday, it's still cold. So uh, that's why we tried to caution you don't get used to this mild weather we had this past weekend. We'll check the end of the forecast on the 16th, and you can still see we got this southwest flow aloft, and that's just going to be, I think, a theme this month. And when these shallow, cold air masses get down here, that's just asking for trouble. And, again, that looks kind of wet, but, again, you've got some cold air not that far away. So needless to say, it's going to be an interesting month to forecast the weather around here. Uh, that's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 3.30 or so today. And if you're local to us, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless.